and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and, uh, and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas, like when's the best time to pull your cracker? And will the Hansons turn on their television on Christmas Day? Do you not watch telly on Christmas Day? Uh, no, not really. Do you not? No, but uh, we will be this year. Will you? Yes. Why? Because I'm on the wheel, Christmas Day special. Are you on an actual Christmas Day yes. special? Yes, I'm sorry. Are you are you doing Top of the Pops, are you, this no, year? No, I didn't get asked back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you and I could have tag team Christmas Day. Are you on on Christmas Day? Yes, I'm on the Christmas Day special. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I'll watch that. <laughs> I'll Thanks. definitely watch that. Congrats. Well, it's, it's not that they didn't ask me about they're not doing Top of the Pops this year. Oh, are they not? I don't think so, anyway. No, that's, that's what they've said. That's what they've said, anyway. I know what's good. I was gutted, to be honest. So hang on, hang on. You did it last year. Yeah. And then this year they've gone, it's probably best we don't do it. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Apparently it's budget reasons, but uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, and of course, what should you do if you've accidentally sexed? What are you creeping for? Christ, you're about <laughs> as inconspicuous as a fucking hippopotamus. Oh, God, you say. <laughs> We might have had a festive drink before. Well, we Be- have a bit of a... Before this episode, we might have had a little festive drink. We might be a little bit tiddly. Um, and of course... Uh, oh, God, we haven't even finished. But Sorry. we're not usual like any ants. Uh, are we William Hansen, the UK's lead netiquette expert? It's Christmas! No, we're not Jordan North radio presenter, but not Top of the Pops presenter this year. Are you shit I- out. I'm more descant, you're more discount. What's descant? Like a, an alternative harmony within a song okay. that you get a carol. Thank you to Luke Moroni for that one. Thank you, Luke. Now, um, we usually yes. start the episode... Famously. ...with the late queen and the late queen mother's favourite drink, which was a gin and the bonnet. Yes. The bonnet is a French aperitif wine. Fortified. Fortified, sorry. Yes. So, fortified. Very much wine. like the late queen and the late queen mother. All right. What? They like to drink, particularly the late Queen Mother. Oh, I thought you were saying they were fortified. I was. Oh, right, okay. Full of alcohol. Right. Um, oh, all right, I'm with you now. So we asked a couple of weeks ago, what was the King's favourite drink? Yes. And we found out it's also one of my favourite drinks, which is a martini. Yep. Now, we didn't know if it was a gin martini or vodka martini, did we? No, and I forgot to actually ask that right. question. I'll find out for next year. So... But because what do you like? I like I like both. I like a gin and a vodka martini. It depends on what mood in. But I also like a Vespa. And that, yeah, okay. That's you told us what and, that is. Yeah. yeah. So, today, so, for today and today only, because it's Christmas, we're going to start this episode with the King's favourite drink. And I think that's very fitting, because, of course, this year has been a, it's a funny old year. We also lost the Queen, and we've had her drink, and now we're going to have the King's drink. But we will go back to next year having a gin and a yeah. bonnet. Don't panic. Just You're not today. going to become... Martini divas. Now, I'm going to make my martini, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to look down the lens and say this to the cameras here, right? For anyone that's a proper cocktail maker, what they're called? Mixologist. For any mixologist, please don't start with, oh, I wouldn't do it like that, or I wouldn't do it like that. This is how I make it. This is how I was taught to make it. Not but, that long ago, about 18 months ago, okay. I really got into them, and this is how I'm going to make it for you. Okay. I'm going to make one for Ben. Let me tell you, these get you absolutely shit-faced, Right? Are you, are you sure you're ready for this? Mm-hmm. Okay, so first of all, I've got ice in the glasses to keep them cool. Yep. Give it, give it another bit of an audio. Give it an, uh, there's some ice in the glass. Do this and we'll win an audio production so, award. Again, I year. want to stress to any mixologist and proper professional... All right, cocktail makers. And you we, might not we, make it we've yours We've got a like different this. type of glass. Yeah. Just, Describe the glass. Just give that a rinse out, actually. Oh. It should be all right. So these are cocktail glasses. I actually think these are too big, if I'm honest. Uh-oh. These are way... And but they're it, yours. Yeah, I know, but I didn't, I, I didn't want to bring my smaller ones in because they're expensive. Um, <laughs> so these are, these are probably a bit too big. And these now, are martini glasses. It's the sort of the... This is a dry martini. So I like mine really dry, which means only a bit of martini. So we've got some vodka. I'm going to make it for three of us. Right, so um, let's get the ice into the... Into there, maybe. Now, what have you got there? A bit more. You've got a cocktail shaker. A cocktail shaker, okay. Right, um, keep those glasses cool. I'll be so, gin and a bonnet is simpler. Yeah, so here we go. This is how I'm going to make it. So, so can, you've got some Grey Goose vodka. Yeah, can you open that for us, the martini? And please? this is the vermouth, isn't it? Yeah, the vermouth, which you've kept very cool. Thank you very Extra much. Extra dry. Oh, Extra says. dry. So William likes it. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm going to do, do it. William's ass. Thank oh, you. thank you. So I'm going to do a, a double for us each. Double? Yeah. I don't really like martini. If no, I'm honest, I like this one. Now, Jordan, that is that is. We've got some pre-chopped um, lemon. So first of all, which can we thank out John, Jonathan in the cafe downstairs yeah. for doing that for so us? So what I do is I put the lemon around the rim of the glass there, oh. like that. Just to give it a little sweet taste. Put that a in sweet there. taste? It's a lemon. A, a zesty taste, right. sorry. All right, gobshite. So just pop, I need to pop that around. Just pop that round. Lemon round the rim. Lemon round the rim, sorry. A lemony rim. A lemony rim. I think I knew him. Good one. And then, now. <laughs> Sorry, this is a great radio or not, uh, audio. I know. Okay, so I might actually. You're, you, okay, you're now very. You you are manhandling the citrus. That's all right. Tell me that, and I'll just give that a bit of a squeezing a bit of lemon into the cocktail a bit shaker. Of lemon into the cocktail shaker. Might need to put beer. Now here's the trick. I, now you've got. Where's the, the vermouth lid? Oh here. I put a tiny. Just a. They say one shot. I'm going to put a tiny lid in. You only need a bit of the vermouth. But there is a lot of vodka in that. Yeah, I know. Do you know what? I might do two lid shots, actually. Right, of the vermouth. Yeah. This is the best bit. Okay, we got that in there. I might put a bit more ice in, actually. You give it a good oh. shake, right? Give it a good you shake. Put the top on the, okay. uh, you've put the top on the bottom. Yep. And this sort of thing. Ay, 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 like your coconut. Your plumpy, juicy raisins are divine. Cha, cha, cha. Your apple slice, bananas, and your hazelnuts. Each ball is divine. Cha cha cha. Do you remember the old brand advert? Yes, you've done it before. So you do one of those again. Ay 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 ay. Look your very much. Your plumpy juicy raisins are divine. Your apple slice, bananas, and your hazelnuts. Cheese to cola is divine. I'm going to give it another shake. Oh, Feel how cold that is. Right. Look how cold that is. It's like being at the Savoy. Right, boys. No, it's... <laughs> Do you want to come round for this, Ben? Come yeah. on, Ben, bring your chair. Bring your chair. Or Neil. Hello. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Can I stay here? It's quite weird having you sitting very close to me. It's going to be good. Okay. Makes a change of strategy right. in me. So I'm pouring it in now. See, see the tour. <laughs> pouring it so in. So Jordan's pouring in the martini into the glasses. Is Mart isn't martini meant to be clear? No, no, no. That's that's clear because I've probably poured a bit too much in that one. <laughs> it's balancing out the glasses. Right. That'll do. Don't put this bit so in. So these glasses are a bit too big, I admit. So that's a vodka martini, extra dry. So am I having the gold rim? Oh, no, no, you have, you have the gold rim. Ben? You have that one, okay. You're being rimmed. Right. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Christmas. Happy Christmas. No clinking. Take still... a big sip. Ben, this take, is why we don't let you anywhere take near. A, take a big sip. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Oh. Sorry, Sorry it's, it's that's, just... that's my first ever martini. Is it your first ever martini? <laughs> what do you think of that? To be fair... It's just vodka, isn't it? Mm. It's a bit... I'll be honest, it's a bit wet for me. It's a bit wet? Now, what mm. does that mean? So it's, um, it's probably a bit too much martini. But it's nice, isn't it? What do you think? It, no, let me have another sip. Is it not very alcoholic? It's, it's bleeding alcoholic. Okay. And this is coming from someone who likes gin and de bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it does do that. It, oh. Right, let me tell Come you. Come on, you sip it, Ben. It's the only, oh, yeah, I'm working. Ben, I'm, I, what do you think I'm doing? This isn't work. <laughs> <laughs> ben, have a sip. Right, if if on a Friday, if oh. you've <sighs> if you've had a stressful week, watch right, watch this. We'll do it together. Stressful on a Thursday. So if you've had a stressful week, you get in on a Friday, or a and Thursday. you want to drink, make one of these. It's really simple. Take a sip with me now. All right, sip together. One, two, three. And you can feel it go down your whole body. Can you feel the tingle? Do you know, I can recommend something else. What? Can you feel that? Can mm -hmm. you feel it? Anyway. What about the martini? <laughs> Should 
to a crack on with the it's episode. Not, oh no, Ben, no stay, Ben. ben. Just, oh, it's quite nice. Having hang you. on, hang on, Ben, stay. Come back, come back, come back. Um, Jordan, first of all, thank you very much for the martini. You're welcome. That's very nice. Thank it's delicious. Um, now, Ben, a few episodes ago, can you cast your mind back? We were talking about Jordan's lovely robe that Jordan had on Instagram. Yeah. You posted a photograph, and we worked out that we had one. Well, because you are our long-suffering producer, and we love you very much. Cut you a little. Oh, it's your sack. <laughs> Empty this... Williams sack. No, look, we've just, look, we've just. Oh, you're all caught up. What I love is I gave this tag for Jordan to sign, <laughs> and he signed the other side of it. <laughs> So where I put happy birthday and Christmas, because it's just been your birthday. Thank you for everything. Love, William, and he's written on the other side. Love you loads, Ben. Merry Christmas, Jordan. Oh, very um, sweet. Just let you know, I have another one and I'm going to go into Wendy and Harper. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, we're about 10 minutes away from me putting a few warm troops on the table. Right, okay, You know what good. Wendy's like when she's had a vodka? And yeah. you... You can piss off for start. Mum, I'm about to go in Wendy North mode. It's gone right to me at that. Go on then, open your present. Should I open my sack? Open. Unload, Ben. No, empty William's sack. It's Ben's sack. So we've got you. Tell everyone what we've got, yeah? It's a lovely robe. It's a, it's a dress. What will I do with this? <laughs> a good belt, Sam. Really sturdy. And if you look on the front of it, it's nice and soft. Ooh. But if you look on the front... Oh, I still need Massive. to give... We've got... We've had it monogrammed. Oh, PB. Yeah, I thought you said... Is it PB? PB. Where's PB. the e? Did you know you have two? Where's the No, e? I... Right, okay. Two things. I need to pay you for that as well. Yeah, yeah, we're going after yeah. it. So make sure I put that in your account before I leave. Second thing, <laughs> I said EPB, but he said PB. No, I, I prefer PB. PB, yeah. PB ring, slips off the tongue. Yeah, what did you say? I think we need to decide, because at the moment we're sort of somewhere in between, aren't we? Well, so, I yeah. wanted executive producer, Ben. What do you say? Thank you so much. Thank That's you. a pleasure. We've all got, and we've brought it, bizarrely, for, for social media, we've brought in our own robe so we can have a photo. We're all going to get a, but who's going to take the picture? <laughs> <laughs> so we've all brought we'll our robes down in. We'll go downstairs. Yeah, we've all brought our, so, like now, spa. so basically, um, we've all got matching robes now. Okay. Okay. Well, they're, they're different colours. And I've got a sack. Or is that no, a, you can you, keep that. Can I keep oh, the can sack? I, yeah, all right, go on, off your pop, take your martini and your robe. Bless you. Oh, thank God, um, it's gone. And now's probably a good time to say that we've got a new producer for the new year. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all your hard work. Thanks for all your hard work. Right, uh, okay. So, where are we? As always, if you need our help with something, then we'd love it if you got in touch. You can t- send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexofmyboss or you can write to William who promises a handwritten reply on his own letter paper. The address is on the website sexofmyboss.com. <laughs> Thank you for the martini. It is quite nice, actually. It's it, growing I knew on me. You'd, I but knew it's the you'd same like... as gin and de bonnet, because the first time I tried gin and de bonnet, I was a bit, whoa, whoa, this mm. is strong. I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. I'd... Now mm. look at me. I, I can do better ones. It's not my best one. It's not my worst. So, yeah. No, it's lovely. It, it, just be careful, because it gets you pissed. Just be careful. They get you happy. Good luck, everyone. There's, a, there's a, a bar in London that serves them, and people go because it's famous for them, but they don't serve more than two. What? Dukes. I think it is Dukes. Yeah. I, I don't know. Dukes Someone... Hotel is where... It's famous for Martini. It's where supposedly Ian Fleming was sitting and he got the inspiration to give James Bond the Martini. Anyway, and people go and after the second, the barman... I don't know if it's true. Highly recommend that no more than two. Oh, Ben's oh, in... Oh, he's got his... Ben, can I hand. just say, why have you taken your top Come off? Come and show everyone. <laughs> Come and show everyone. Why did you have to Come take your top stand. off for Come that? Come show everyone. You've taken your trousers off as well, you pervert. <laughs> why, why, would I, why would I not? Well, you can put a robe on on top show. of your clothes. It's comfortable. It's nice, isn't it? That's quite... Let me... It's let soft. Me, we'll film oh, it. Yeah, yeah, nice. Let me get my finger out. Oh. <laughs> Christ. Please say you kept your pants on. Bend there. To give us a twirl. <laughs> not too go. fast. <laughs> and just uh, give us a flash. Open up the belt. <laughs> Go on, the G&D was a love it. Oh! oh! There we go. Oh. Right, okay. Look. <laughs> you walk around that camera so camply. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, people are listening to us and thinking, what the so... hell's going on? <laughs> right, anyway. Um, what a year we've had. What a year we've had. It's been a fun... This is the first year, of course, we have done, other than that week we fell out, we've done no... <laughs> <laughs> 
before. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've done. <laughs> We've done. Well, uh, they have nearly cost me a lot of money. Do you know? <laughs> it wasn't that. It wasn't I was just that. reminding you of your contractual obligations. <laughs> In a court of law, I would have won. Um, no, it's fine. And hey, we get to make go hard or go home jokes next year, so it's, it's all turned out for the best. <laughs> do you know what the most annoying thing about that argument was? You were right. Because I remember you saying, go back to him and say this. And I did. And they, yeah. Mm. Anyway. Anyway, as ever, I'm always right. But no, what a year it's been. We've done always on, bar that one week. Um, I've got married. Haven't mentioned it, but I got married. <sighs> yes. You got married and we've been, this is series infinity. Yes. Yes. To infinity and beyond. Yes. Beyond. What else has happened? Uh, we've done a tour. Yeah, oh God, yeah. Um, you, well, you've had your stag day, we've done a tour. Yes, you've moved house, we've launched a steamer, perhaps the most bizarre piece of podcast merchandise ever. Creative or sellout, so you decide, but that's <laughs> available on the website, sexandmyboss.com. You can actually get a Help I Sex My Boss branded steamer. First time for a couple of years we haven't had any, lo- any lockdowns. Yes. Although now Ben's got that dressing gown, we've got a lockdown, there's a lockdown in his future. What do you mean? Oh, the good bell, Sam. Um, no pockets though. two new impressions uh-huh. Diego and Cat. hello what do I say my name's Diego and I'm Ben and Cat's dog or what babes and Cat. hi Ben have you been talking about me on the podcast again no Cat. I believe you have Ben there and we we've go. had the new feature the hit feature <coughs> smash hit or similar words of William's Etiquetimology of the Week. William's Etiquetimology of the Week, yeah. Indeed. So, and we've just drunk a martini. Yeah, and we're pissed already. What's yes. your Christmas plans? What are you doing this year? Uh, we're going to see Micah's family. Oh, you're going up to Wakefield? It's not Wakefield, but yes, we're going up in that direction. You've got your crash helmet. My crash helmet? Yeah. For Wakefield, for Yorkshire. Why would I need a crash helmet? Oh, Merry Christmas, Mum! Merry Christmas, Dad! This is William, my husband. Uh, it still feels weird saying that. Come on, old bear. Come and sit yourself down. Do you if want a I am, If Mikey, the day Mikey calls me hubby is the day that he will be seeing the inside of, of a divorce court. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you can see going up to Wakefield. That'd be nice. No, it's not Wakefield, but yes, we're going up to Yorkshire. It's Wakefield. No, it's not. Was he or was he not born in Wakefield? <sighs> I was, John. I was Wakefield, born and bred. Proud as, proud as punchy. I'm what are taking you, him up there. What? Sorry. What? What are you doing for Christmas? This and that. No, bit of this, bit of that. Do you want to tell me? Just seeing loved ones. As seeing, oh, that's nice. Spending time with family and friends. And you're not working? I am. On, on Christmas Day? Yeah, I'm on air on Christmas morning. Yeah, I'm doing Christmas Day breakfast on radio. You're doing Christmas Day breakfast? Which I've always wanted to do. And Scott Mills has done it for years. Greg yes. did it for years. And I'm, yeah, I've always wanted to do it. Oh, so, that's nice. Yeah, do you need a day. co-presenter? Um, no, it should be all right, actually. Oh, okay. But fine. thanks. Well, I'll be in Wakefield, oh, so okay. it's fine. Oh, yeah. He oh. is, he's in Wakefield, so I'm, I'm doing that on Christmas Day, which I'm looking forward what to. What are you hoping Father Christmas brings you this year? Not even thought. Probably lots of nice things for your new house. Yeah, bits for new house, yeah. It's great funny. when people do move or get their first house or move into a bigger premises or moving together because people's Christmas or birthday lists suddenly become very interesting. Mm. Whereas previously you struggle. Would you like to know what's on my Christmas list oh, this year? Oh, I cannot believe at 34 years old you do it. How old are you now? Uh, 33. 33. Are you 32 or 33? I'm not 32, I'm 33. All right. At 33 years old he still does a Christmas list. Go on. I am i don't know me. I... All I want for Christmas, as long as there's decent booze in the house and good food, that's all I want. And to be spending with good ones. All I want for Christmas is you. So, I would like a new mattress protector. Why? Why have you put that? I just ordered it off Amazon. Well, why would you put that? Because I struggle. I'd like two or four new pillow protectors. I'd like four new napkins to match an existing set. I'd like a book by Lady Anne Glyn Connor, or Lady Glyn Connor, oh, she correctly is. Yes, the one. new one. She had hard life. Uh... I'd like some new kitchen knives. Mm-hmm. I'd like this. I mean, no one will believe me when I say this. I'd like some 0% gin. It's just a particular brand that's come oh, out, which yeah, I quite like. I do like that. And I'd like some Arthur Price steak knives. That's it. That's all I want. For... Oh, and I'd quite like a new coffee grinder. Oh, Okay. I found an, an even more I don't know one. what I want. I've got 
I've got um, both Burnley tops this year. <laughs> um, what do I want? What do you want, Ben? You got yours, Justin Gale. Yeah, you didn't, don't need anything else oh, now. Uh, I don't... Yeah. Oh, you don't want much, do you? No, I just... Get a, just want peace, nice, peace. A nice bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, I like a nice bottle of whiskey. How, do they do 0% whiskey, like they do 0% gin? What's the point? What's the point? Well, just to have something for the sake of enjoying it. Did you know most 0% gins are even fewer calories than actual gin? Oh, is it? Mm. You have a 0% gin most nights, don't you? Uh, yes, Mon- Monday to, to Thursday. Oh, that, ah, tell you what... You know that lovely bottle of wine you brought when you all came round for dinner? Oh, that one I brought, yeah. Yes, what? which we had a, we had when we came to yours. Claret, your old yeah, place. yeah. A few weeks ago, I just op- I just felt like a bottle of red wine. I mean, I didn't have the whole bottle. A bottle, I mean, a I, did, I did over the week. Oh, okay. I just started. I don't drink red wine at home unless I have people over, but I just walk around the house with a glass of red wine. It's a hey, welcome to your 30s, Karen. It's easily done. <laughs> But it's delicious wine, isn't it's it? It's easily done. You can get me that again. I know, me, I know a good red when I see one. So, yes. Yeah. I knew you'd like that one. It's nice. That's so. why I don't drink it weak. Oh, I do. I know. But if, if I drank it weak, I'd be like smashing a bottle of wine at night. So oh, I just, no, don't do that. Just that's wait till, that's yeah, exactly. drinking irresponsibly. Just wait till the weekend. Because okay. it's so easy to come on. There's nothing wrong with it coming on from work and having a glass. Do you have a drink most nights? No. Anyway. It's just drunk on life. What else has happened this year? What are you doing for New Year? What are you doing for New Year? I don't... I hate New Year. Yeah. I've said this before. We'll just be in London. I think... Oh, maybe we should all meet up. Because yes. I think we'll be in London as well. Oh, we could come around to yours. Yeah, I think you should, actually. Ben, you busy? What are you doing New Year's Eve? We might still be... I don't know if... If, if I have my dining table, I'll have these round. If don't, not, we could have a picky tea, darling. Yeah, we could do. Yeah. I'll make a New Year's Eve picky tea. New Year's Eve picky oh, tea. Oh, we can do that. Oh, and we can have a game of... It's... um. Basically, that Claudia Winkleman TV show. It's called... Um, Strictly Come Dancing. No, a card game, but they've made the TV show out of it. Oh, it's called Traitor or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll have a game of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. I'll, um, I'm going to keep this anonymous because in case this particular relative of mine hears this, but before Christmas Day, but one of my relatives has asked for the board game of Michael McIntyre's The Wheel, which we gave Ben last year. And Is it any good, that? We had a good hour on Boxing Day. Yeah. And I'm giving it to my relative, who will open it on Christmas Day, and then watch me on the wheel on Christmas Day. Are how... you on the wheel on Christmas Day? You've yes, not I mentioned uh, it. No. How meta? Meta. Oh God. Don't worry. Right. Anyway, there's only like... going to be one occasion in my life I can do that. Um, who's making the Christmas dinner then this year? Oh, if you're having it in Yorkshire, will they be doing Yorkshire puddings? Uh, probably. I think Yorkshire puddings on Christmas dinners. But they do do beef. So that kind of works. Do they? Well, you have a choice of beef or turkey. Yeah, we are. Last year, Kate made beef, turkey and ham. Beef, turkey and ham? It might have just been turkey and ham. I forget. It's the three wise men, not the three roast meats. All right. I'm sorry. Amuse myself. Is that vodka gone to you, Reggie? Yeah. It's, it, it is, yes. Can we have another one in part two? So which, it, is that, which is mine? That's yours. Right. Yeah, they'll, don't, they'll get, they get you hammered then. They're lethal. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else. I'll see why the king likes it. I do like Christmas Day itself. I love Boxing Day when the footy's on. Burnley's game's been moved though. Oh, where's it been moved to? It's moved to. We're we playing you. We played Stoke. On the thirtieth, it's at Stoke. No, because it was meant. We're yeah, playing on Boxing the... Day, but the one after is Stoke. Yeah, we're playing you on the thirtieth at Turf Moor. We should go on actually. I think it's at Stoke. No, yeah, it is. It's at Stoke. Oh, we should go on. Yeah, I've not decided what. Yeah. Anyway, so that's been moved. I am in between Christmas and New Year. Uh, Joe and Luke and my brother and Mikey and I are going to watch um, the Panto. That's what we're doing. I think it's weird to go and watch Panto after, after well, Christmas. Well, last year with Ella and Josh, we went and saw it in January. And that, although it's great, was a little bit weird because that's right at the end of the run. But at least you're sort of still sort of in... The yeah. Christmas. You haven't had New Year yet, but I'm looking forward to that. Although, Joe and Luke, we've already booked up, or we're booking our panto for next year, which is the new... They used to do it above the stag in Vauxhall, but they've moved it. It's a... Let's put it this way. It's a... It's, a, it's an adult panto, and it's called He's Behind You. Oh, okay. Yes, so we can't wait for that. Oh, that... You yeah. would lo- you'll love <laughs> that. Yeah, I need to go on... I'm hoping to go and see V, Vernon, because he's in panto as well. This year. Oh, yes, he is? Yeah, uh, and I'm uh, very good. And I want to go and see him. Uh, he's in High Wycombe? It is High Shall I tell you? We'll give him a good plug. Yeah. Because I'm meant to be going and see him, but I've been Like you working. did in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. 
Oh, yeah, Vernon's in Panto in Wickham. Hi, Wickham, isn't it? At the Swan Theatre. Oh, the Wickham Swan? Yeah, at Cinderella. So. Hiya, Wickham. Uh, <laughs> that's quite good as well for you. So, uh, we'll go and, we should go and see him. I'll go and see him in that limbo week. I love the crimbo limbo week. Gooch week, as some people call it. Is it just Christmas Day you're working and that's it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so at least you can yeah, relax I love that week, just watching films. And some people hate it, but it's just watching films and going to pub and... Putting yeah. your new mattress topper on the bed. Yeah, putting yeah. your new mattress topper on the bed. That yeah. sort of thing. What's been your favourite dilemma? Well, like the year? ones that are standing out in my mind would be Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Father on Grinder. F- Blow, lad who speaking to an older man on Grinder, swapping yep. uh, nudes and dirt chat, and then when they swap face pics, realizes it was his dad. And Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Oh, getting fingered in Harry Potter. Yeah, someone amazing. to tell the grandkids. Yeah, we've had quite a few this year. That we? was very Wendy. What you just did there. What did I do? You just went. Something to tell the grandkids. <laughs> yeah, spill my gun. I'm a bit, I told you to get, you to get you pissed these, don't we? I've got to read correspondence. And also, today it's a handwritten spesh spesh. Deciphering people's handwriting, reading words that probably don't make grammatical sense whilst a little bit drunk. The thing about vodka is, I love it, but it does make you want to headbutt people. It, if, okay. I, if I leave here and you're outside nutting randomers, I'll know it's the vodka. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um... The we... Norths aren't very good on vodka. I'm not going to lie. The Norths are not good on vodka. In don't, fact... Don't think the Hansons are, right? In fact... Stop drinking Stop drinking... In fact, <coughs> vodka should be banned from... Because my dad's not great on vodka. My mum is... <sighs> tell you what, my mum could knock out Dwayne Johnson on vodka. <laughs> the Rock. The Rock, seriously. Um, and our... Yeah, we're not good on vodka. But these are good. Oh, God, I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do Jordan's joke of the week? Okay. Why does Santa have such a big sack? <laughs> and I'll tell you the punchline after this break. Okay, G and Divas, thanks for sticking with us. It's our Christmas special episode of Help I Sex and My Boss. We're a bit pissed on uh, the King's favourite drink, which Martini. is... Martini. Martini, and it's time for Jordan's jelly joke of the week. Why does Santa have such a big sack? I don't know. Because he only comes once a year. (laughs) Nice. Two snowmen in a field. Yeah. One says to the other, can you smell carrots? You've done all of this before. (laughs) I didn't want to tell you this. I know, but you can think of that. (laughs) Do you know traditionally why we have an angel at the top of the Christmas tree? Yes. Do you know? Yes, because they were... No, no, shut up. (laughs) So, well then, a few days before Christmas... Santa's Father Christmas is stressed, proper pissed off. Everyone's getting on at him. Mrs. Claus is getting on at him. Elves are getting on at him. Reindeers are getting on at him. He's well stressed. Really pissed off. Goes into his office, slams the door. Next thing you know, it's a knock at the door. It's the angel. She comes into his office. She says, Santa, where do you want this Christmas tree? And that's why (laughs) we have the angel at the top of the tree from now on. He shoved it up her ass. In case you didn't know. Thanks. Shall, yeah, it's always jokes are always very good when you have to explain them. Shut, shut up. Shall we uh, go to listeners' problems and questions? Yes, just before we do that, remember you can post a picture of your Christmas tree onto TikTok with hashtag Picky Tree, tag in at Sexed My Boss, and I will try and rate as many of the trees as I can oh, yes. over the festive period. Do that. We're going to do Picky Trees. So send in your pictures of all your decorations, all your trees. Even better if you've got like outside decorations. The tackier, the sillier, the better. And uh, William Hansen. We'll, we'll read them out. This is from P.K. Rooney. Dear Will and Disgrace. I'm so pissed. I've only had one of them and they go straight to it. And executive producer Bob. I oh, know he, he starts next year. <laughs> Firstly, may I send thanks to you for the fantastic podcast. I have spent the last three weeks playing your entire back catalogue. No mean feat considering how meaty your back C is. Uh, reliving the past few years through your trials and tribulations has been a wonderful journey and a distraction from the crazy world we now endure. Mm. And just like your good selves, I am now mad for the D. What a delicious revelation. Thank you, kind sirs. You both are national treasures in my eyes. 
On to my dilemma. Some months ago, quite late at night, a notification flashed up on my slimline telephone, good, informing me that a good friend of mine was live on Facebook. I immediately thought this to be odd, as my friend is not really into the socials. I proceeded to open the app and was horrified to see a live video of him in his ensuite bathroom spread over the front camera of his phone, legs akimbo, seemingly investigating his gooch. That's the fleshy part between the chocolate starfish and the ball bag. Suddenly, there was a kerfuffle and the Facebook Live presentation ended with a quick shot of his face, looking absolutely mortified. He was checking his ass on Facebook Live. I was stunned into silence. He didn't know he was on Facebook Live. The following morning, his wife called me in hysterics, explaining her husband had thought he was using the camera on his phone to see if he had a pimple on his aforementioned gooch. Yeah, but that's the excuse I'd use as well. <laughs> Only realising he was using Facebook Live when it was too late. <laughs> Apparently, there had only been five viewers of his fall from grace, and his wife asked if I had been one of them. <laughs> this is fucking brilliant. <laughs> Out of respect and to spare his embarrassment, I lied and said I had not seen it. By this point, his wife and I were in hysterics, laughing uncontrollably. To this day, he is quite anxious about who had seen him that fateful night. <laughs> I feel rather guilty for fibbing. And so did I do the correct thing, or does his anxiety of mystery viewers warrant a confession? Also, what is the correct etiquette for investigating one's gooch? Yours sincerely, PK Rooney. One's gooch. Okay, um, as I would have said at first, it's better to lie. Sometimes white lies, but I think it's better to be honest in this situation, so at least he can tick one of the five off and then he knows. I mean, I guess it depends on your relationship with the person. He's going to go around the rest of his life. Every party he goes to, every time he goes into work, it's like, are they seeing it? Yeah, did but, they see it? Yeah, it's, um, it's it's regrettable. It is. I'd move abroad if that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Someone seen me checking out a spot on my ass on fa- FaceTime, Facebook Live. Mm. How did you? End, how did he end up on Facebook Live? I, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm look. I'm just going to go out on a limb here. Maybe the friend is slightly older, yeah, and didn't necessarily know what app does what. Why don't you just check in a mirror? <laughs> or just ask your significant other to have a look. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's better than broadcasting on Facebook Live. <laughs> if you had a spot on your ass, would you get cat to look at it? What about a pile? Doctor, or well, uh, go to the doctors for a pile. Well, yeah, for Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> Let's get some anusol. Is it anusol or anusol? I think it's anusol. Is it the size of that freaking tube they give you for it? That, not that I know, but that fucking <laughs> <laughs> not that big. This well, look at this. This says Telegram. Oh awesome. wow! Is that what telegrams used to come like? Well, no, what I think... were telegrams? It was just a quick letter. It was it? like a text message or an email or a text message in the old days. Yeah, very short. Very it? short. You because you get charged per word, so thus you would drop things like the and uh and oh, quite be quite and like text messages it, used to be. How would it be done then? By either Morse code or by a telegram machine, which oh. I don't know, but I'm going to call it a telegram machine. Telegraph. Thank Telegraph. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so this is a telegram. This is from Thomas. Dear William and Jordan, I have been a and diva since I've I've been a and diva since you first started the podcast. No way. Until now. Until now, I've never had cause to write to you. I've recently made a significant change in my life and, along with two friends, moved 300 miles across the country from a semi-rural area to the big city. Other than the two friends I now live with, I only know one other person in the city who is a very very senior political figure who I got to know after I got my first job in politics several years ago. He has been a great friend and mentor and very supportive of our move. He has been particularly supportive of me and has invited me to a number of events so I can meet new people, including having me at some of his work events as a plus one. The issue I have is, as lovely as he is, he's incredibly socially awkward. Hmm. And I turn up to things and he doesn't introduce me to anyone, so they've no idea who I am. And I don't know anyone's names or in what capacity they're attending. Equally, it's clear no one understands who I am and where I've appeared from. And as I'm visibly around two decades younger than him, I don't want to appear as some sort of consort for hire. How should I address this without appearing silly or being pointed? Yours sincerely, Thomas. Just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Thomas, such and such as a friend. 
Oh, hi, I'm William. I'm here with Jordan. Yeah. I think you're overthinking it, Thomas. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe you are worried that there is something a bit, you know. Also, lots of questions about this friendship. Yes. Here. Lots of questions, Thomas. Not going to lie, but we'll just... Gloss over this. Gloss over that. That's the word. So many questions. Like, what's going on here? Um, but, yeah, I would absolutely... Uh, just introduce yourself. Say hi. I'm uh, Jordan. I'm here with William. Or I'm yeah, William. I'm friend. a friend of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And say friend. And introduce yourself. Yeah. It's, it's fine. To you shouldn't just... have to. You're yeah. absolutely right, Thomas. Your your friend should introduce you. And actually, etiquette for everyone else. If you're if you if I bump into Jordan, for example, I know Jordan and I'm with my friend Bonzo, for example. Then I obviously. How is Bonzo? I've not seen him for <laughs> years. Then I say, Oh, Bonzo, this is Jordan. Ha- Bonzo. I I don't know. Just sounds like one of your. Public posh boy nicknames. Bonzo. That's uh, Bonzo. I just call him Bonzo. Well, he's a bit of a Bonzo, isn't he? What? Yeah, a bit of a Bonzo. Yeah. I'll tell you where Bonzo comes from. Bonzo comes from my lovely English teacher uh, in GCC English, who would, there would be two, he would have two fictitious ideal students, Elsie or Bonzo. Elsie was the perfect pupil who always did her well it was called prep which has a different meaning now but her um homework uh on time turned up punctually participated in class and bonzo was the opposite was always late disheveled skipped classes so you are you didn't want to be a bonzo you always wanted to be an elsie and, and until, i was a big elsie at school i bet you were mm. and up until recently it sounds like bonzo was running the country <laughs> no that's bozo oh yeah bojo uh this next letter is from yes! god Sorry, I've got my Christmas jumper on. I've not worn it since last year. It's a bit dusty. <laughs> this one is from Jill. Dear William. Oh, you're... Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. This one is from Jill. Dear William, I don't like Adidas Yeezy trainers. However, my husband does. What the hell are Yeezy trainers? I don't know about this sneeze. Sneezy. <laughs> Go on. I don't like Adidas Yeezy trainers, but my husband does. just read that bit. He has now purchased a pair of their sliders. Hideous. Still no idea. Is it acceptable for me to... Oh, right. Is it acceptable for me to sneakily take them out of the suitcase before we leave for holiday? No. I will replace them with a plain black pair so he will not have sliders. So he will still have sliders, just not the designer ones. Please pass my best regards to your friend and colleague, Jordan. Yours sincerely, Jill Blair. Jill sends her regards. Oh, thanks, Jill. Um, no, Jill, don't do this, because Wendy did this on holiday once, and it really pissed Graham off, and they didn't speak for the first three days. Right. They went on holiday together, and they were over on cases, because mums and dads are dead, like, you know, they actually weigh cases mm. and stuff before they go away. And uh, they were over, so my mum took all of his books out for holiday, loads <laughs> of his clothes, loads of his shoes, so she could keep hers, and he went mad, so oh. don't take them out. Okay. You know? But, yeah. but then I get it, Jill, if he's an old... Because my dad, my dad went into a phase of buying Converse. At, how, at what age? Oh, we're talking a couple of years ago. Hmm. He's got Converse. Should, would I suit a pair of Yeezys? You'd suit a pair of Jordans, I think. Jordans? Yeah. What are they? Yeah, the um, Nike Air, Air Jordans, is it? Yeah. Oh, Michael Jordan? Yeah, he'll check you. Oh, maybe for Christmas. Oh, I'll I'd put look. on a, a late addition to my Christmas list, a pair of Yeezys. Please let me dress you for one of your next etiquette classes. I'll put you in a pair of Jordans and skinny jeans. Skinny <laughs> jeans? What is it, 2014? Yeah. Hey! Oh. Oh, I'm a slim fit these days. Mm. Well... What's Do you know what my jean, uh, jean tailoring is? Or, in fact, all trousers. Straight. It's always ar- ironic. <laughs> it's the only thing about you that is. <laughs> <laughs> you cracked the bloody joke! Yes, I know, but mine was funny. Um, this is... this is a, Actually, this is not typed. This is not handwritten. This is typed. But it's on lovely letterhead, so we'll go with it. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll allow it in. It's from uh, Terry and Carl. Sounds like a sitcom. Uh, Dear William Jordan and executive producer Ben, firstly, I would like to apologise for the type letter rather than its handwritten alternative. I fear that if I sent a letter in with my handwriting, it would take so long to decipher it that Ben would probably have snuck his way into a chief executive producer role by the time the message got across. 
No danger of that. I'm pissed. Uh, additionally, please excuse the company letterhead. I could say that I've been encouraged to write in by a fellow G and Diva co-worker of mine, and thus it seemed appropriate. But in reality, I just want to get paid to write this letter. Work smart, not hard, I suppose. Yep. I also wanted to say a massive thank you to the whole sexted team. Last year, I left university, and as much as I tried, I wasn't quite prepared for the shift between living with a house of friends and living by myself. After being introduced to the podcast by my co-worker, Carl, the aforementioned and Diva, I heard your voices, and they made me laugh, and it keeps me company. Oh, nice thank it, you. Nice it is aside, I write with a question that I'm hoping you can provide some advice for. Soon, I'll be moving in with my partner and his parents, whilst we save some money for the next stage of our life. Oh. But I have one worry. His mother is a feeder. Her meals get to the point where you can't eat for 15 minutes straight and still sees no difference when you look down at your plate. Uh. Currently, I do my best to be a grateful guest. I have always been taught that it's poor etiquette to not finish your plate, but is, yeah. quite frankly, it's getting ridiculous. I work for a bus company, which I know isn't particularly known for its slenderness, apologies, Carl, but I worry that should this matter not be addressed, I'll no longer need to hop on a bus to get to work as I'll be fine rolling down the road of my own accord. So my question is, how do I address it? I've tried making light of the situation with her, but regardless of how many jokes I make, she still presents me with the same portion size. Please help me. I'm the, I'm only one man fighting my way through torrential amounts of spag bowl and roast dinners. Both Carl and I will be eagerly waiting your reply. Yours, Terry Vincent, brackets, more of a William, and Carl Cropper, brackets, more of a Jordan. Thanks, Terry. Terry, I hear you, sister. I hear you. This was mm. my childhood. Really? This is why I was... Let's. Have sh- you've seen yeah. pictures of me as a kid, haven't you? Yeah. You've seen... We'll, we'll get some pictures and put them up, but I was... <laughs> quite, will, will we? I, I was quite... Are you sure you want those out there? I was quite there? chubby as a child and as a teenager because I was brought up by a feeder too. And I also, like, apparently... I used to have three T's when I was younger. So I'd go to my auntie calves. Mm. I'd, after yeah, but that was, that was your own fault. After nursery, and she'd met me like a butty. And then you'd go and tell your mother that you hadn't been fed. Fed. Then my mum had met me tea, and then I'd go across to my auntie Linda's, right? And my auntie Linda had met me like something to eat, and I'd have three teas for, for ages. And then it's why I'm so greedy now. So you've just got to hear me out, because I, I will, I'm like a puppy. I will eat until I'm sick, but you've just got to have one portion and be like, that'll do, that'll do me. Or maybe mm. suggest some nights of the week that you're going to make your own tea. Okay. Your advice? Uh, oh, God. It's Northern. I, I'm assuming that she's a Northern mum. Mum's just like yeah. feeding you. Hull. Hull. Yeah, oh, um, God, up there they feed you. Hull. I remember when I went to uni <laughs> and decided. They, they feed you until you're full. <laughs> it's not that funny. William, it's really not that funny. No, but after one of your martinis, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm halter bursting. <laughs> Gets funnier. <laughs> oh. I'm pissed at you. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, but yeah, um, what would I say? Anyway. They like to be, when I went to uni, I realised I needed to lose a bit of weight. Mm. I'd come back and my mum was livid. She's like, you look gaunt, you look ill. Blokes aren't meant to be like that, they're meant to have a bit of meat on them. Yeah, so I was brought up by a feeder, don't you worry. Yeah, I, just try and eat as much as you can. Um, if, you've, if you've had the conversation with your mother-in-law, um, Terry, then that's all you can do. Just eat as much as you can. But yeah, the etiquette now is to try and clear as, everything on your plate. What would as you do as then? Possible. When you what would because would you try and eat it full in all? What would you do? Uh, I try and eat as much as I could, but if I reach my limit, I'd stop. You've been filled up a few times in Hull, haven't you? Filled up. I have only once been to Hull. Have you? Yes. What for? Radio. I've been a few times. Nice. Uh, final letter. This one is from Lexi. Dear William Jordan, brackets producer Ben. Firstly, I'd like to say I'm a huge fan of the podcast. My boyfriend introduced me to it in June and I've already listened to all the episodes. Oh, thank my you. question for you today is accompanied by a story that happened to one of my closest friends. <laughs> She is the sort of person who constantly has the most bizarre and hilarious things happen to her, which couldn't happen to anyone else, a bit like Jordan. One day, while living in 
One day, while living with her aunties in her late teens and possibly lacking in common sense and street smart due to our upbringing on a small island in the Scottish Hebrides, she, to put it bluntly, desperately needed a shit. She ran to the toilet and did her business, forgetting that the toilet was in fact broken. Frantically flushing with nothing leaving the toilet bowl, she thought about her options. No, there I don't want to know. Are this going to go? There is much debate within our friendship group as to what the next step would be. But if we were in a similar situation, uh, what she did would not have come to mind if it were me. She remembered she had a dog poo bag in her pocket and decided to take her deposit out of the toilet and put it in the bag. I think that's pretty clever. She then put the bag of shit into her pocket. I can see where this is going wrong. Uh, I'm unsure why she thought this was the easiest way to deal with the problem, but she created the most elaborate solution. Was this at someone's house? N- no, I think it was a public loo, wasn't it? Oh, we just no, lit. Le- it was a house. Oh, it was a house. Um, she called the dogs, put on their leads, and took them on a walk to the nearest dog park, the whole time carrying her shit in her pocket. She then found a dog poo bin where she discarded the shit in a bag. <laughs> a shit that had been a metaphorical and physical weight on her for the last <coughs> half an hour. We often ask, why didn't she put it in the garden bin? Why did you create such an elaborate cover-up? However, she stands by her decision to this day. So my question for you is, what is the etiquette for if you accidentally shit in a broken toilet? We really can't end the series on this one. Thanks for an amazing podcast. Love you both. I have nothing to comment. I, I think what your friend did was absolutely very wise and very... Uh... Very At least good. your bin didn't smell. Yeah, I think that was like talk about thinking on your feet. Talk about up shit creek without a paddle. Yeah. Just don't be up shit creek without a doggy bag. I think she was very much. It was either that or throw it out a window. Nice. <laughs> Why am I saying nice? I don't know. I'd be honest. I'm. I've checked out. I'm not a. That's made me feel a bit weird. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Producer Ben is still sitting there in his robe. Yeah. It's quite sweet. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. Well, if that <laughs> if that don't leave you feeling very festive, Gene Davis, don't yes. well. Happy Christmas, everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Ha- uh, and look, thank you so much for everyone who has listened over the last year, who has come to one of our live shows, who has stopped us to say hello in the street, who has sent us a message on social media, who has emailed in, who has slid into our DMs, who has written a handwritten letter. We appreciate each and every one of you. I echo what William says. Genuinely, you are just the best listeners you make this podcast and we we love you to bits and if you've been listening from the start or the last week or since tiktok just thank you because it's a joy and a pleasure to do this every week and you guys make it yeah absolutely and thank you to the whole team that works hard on it as well producer yes, ben to jump cut jack jump slash cut jack, jack the snipper jack to the alex snipper, to, to alex Tia, who edits the videos to Tia, Tia on social media on social media to stuart stuart our um, executive, executive producer. Executive Luxury Deluxe. How are you, lads? No, oh, no, that's Geordie, isn't it? <laughs> Who's caught his jacket? Have a good Christmas. So thank you very much. And also thank you to uh, to Kat and to Mikey for putting up with all of the impressions. And Diego. Well, he's a dog. And Sarah. Oh, yes, my mother. And Brian. My brother. My brother. And Wendy and Graham. And Wendy and Graham. And the potato peeler lady. <laughs> Wendy. Other Wendy. Sure. No, no, Vicky. Don't name her. You've named her in the past. And uh, I think we should leave you on that. <clears throat> Shall we leave with a festive sing song? Because we're known for our singing. Okay, I was going to do a. Wendy, can I marry a potato peeler? For last time. Okay. She want me to do a Wendy one? Go on. No, this is Wendy doing an impression of you. She's South William. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's funny. Pledge on your shoes. I'm like, all right, oh, my God. Of all it. the things I've ever said, that's the thing Pledge that's stuck. Pledge on your shoes. Should we leave them with a Christmas Christmas song? Yes, which is which Christmas song should we do? Jingle bells, Batman no. swells. Let's Robin do a... flew away. How about away. Hark the Herald? Uncle Burley lost his whirly oh, on the motorway. Hey, what's that one? No, I know what one we'll do. <clears throat> Come, they told no, him, per up a pom pom. Can we not? Oh, all I want for Christmas is you. Okay. Bit of Mariah. Because uh, okay. I've got a great range. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I, I don't, don't want a lot for Christmas. Christmas. 
There is just one thing I need, and I, I don't, don't care about the presents <laughs> underneath the Christmas tree. I don't even wish for Santa. Here's a song for Saint Nick, and I don't want to jump to the chorus. All I want for Christmas. Is that's called a run. You, cha cha cha. Never doing martinis again. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Gene Davis. <laughs>